What is up bros and brats, I am Ink Slasher, and today we're going to be talking about 5 things you missed from the Call of Duty World War 2 reveal. And there was actually quite a lot of things that Sledgehammer actually put into their presentation that weren't directly obvious, were hidden, and I wanted to show you all of those today and kind of clear up any confusion you may have had about these. These things include zombies, multiplayer, and campaign, all three. Now to start things off, let's start before the world reveal actually happened itself. So 20 hours before the world reveal happened, Michael Condry changed the image of the countdown until the world reveal and in this countdown he added in some Morse code. If you don't know what Morse code is it's basically its own alphabet or code to denote certain numbers or letters to send signals in a various different ways. You can do this with light, you can do this with electric impulses, many different ways. This one just so happened to be in picture form. So basically once this Morse code is translated it translates to Waterloo, Stamford and York. Now this is actually a an intersection where the Call of Duty world reveal actually took place in London. It's the exact intersection where Waterloo, Stamford, and York actually meet. And in the middle of that intersection, there is the IMAX theater in which the Call of Duty world reveal took place. So they started giving us little Easter eggs before the actual reveal actually ever happened. So the next one's a big one. So throughout the whole reveal, people were tweeting in and they were showing the tweets on the screen. Well, at the bottom of these tweets, there was a little code at the bottom of every single one. And when all of those codes were put together, it spelled out callofduty.com slash classified. Now when you go to this, it brings up this, an Enigma machine. Now if you don't know what these are, you've probably never seen the movie Imitation Game, but in this movie it's basically a machine that the Germans used to send codes throughout World War II. This one, not really any different. So down at the bottom of this machine you can see a little code down there. This is actually coordinates. Now these coordinates lead to Dunkirk, France. Now, the interesting thing about Dunkirk, France is it's the place of a very large battle from World War II. This battle was called the Battle of Dunkirk, and there was another thing that was called the Evacuation of Dunkirk. By far the more interesting of the two is the Evacuation of Dunkirk, and I personally think that these coordinates and what this is going to have to do with the zombies is going to do with the Evacuation of Dunkirk, not necessarily the Battle of Dunkirk. So another interesting thing about this is, as we know through most Call of Duty games, you follow the American army. Now, the interesting thing about Dunkirk is the American army was actually not involved whatsoever in the battle or evacuation of Dunkirk. The three countries mainly involved were Great Britain, Canada, and Belgium. The reason why I know so much about this is because I'm from Canada, and this is actually one of the battles we had to learn about in my high school history class way back in the day. And I'm not going to lie, back in 2010 when I took high school history, I had no idea that this information was actually going to be useful to me in the future especially to do with making YouTube videos. The only reason why I bring this up is because mainly in the campaign of Call of Duty they focus on the American army, and this time the American army isn't even involved in this battle. Of course, we have the Allies and the Axis, with the Germans being the bad guys, and that's what I really think Zombies is going to focus on, is the Axis of the World War II battles. And then with the Enigma machine, we actually have the code itself that goes into the machine. Now, how do you find this code? Well, you actually have to go to the very first image that was released from Call of Duty Zombies. Now, this image, if you go and change the saturation and colors a little bit, you can find a cipher on the bottom of the helmet. Now when you actually take this and put it into the Enigma machine, a new code comes up on the screen that says a new whore rises, which I don't know if that's going to be like a catchphrase for the new zombies or something, I'm not 100% sure, but that's what comes up. And then when the Enigma machine unlocks, you see this file. Now this file has four names signed on it, which we will talk about in a second, but then when you open the file, two more things are inside. On the left we have a picture of Frederick Barbosa, which is a really interesting depiction of him with a staff crystal ball. It's odd, but a lot of people are saying that this is in a reference to Operation Barbosa from World War II, which was when Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union. And on the right, we have a picture painting, whatever you want to call it, of young man Raphael, which was actually stolen during World War II and was never actually seen again. And since this has been released, there has now been more codes actually found for the Enigma machine, which actually show the four people who signed this folder. Now these four people include Robert Zussman, Edward Crowley, Roland Daniels, and finally Rousseau. Now we don't fully know who these characters exactly are yet, but there is also several other things found. Notes, letters, blueprints, and I'll leave a link down in the description to an article that will show you all of these images. 
So very clearly, Sledgehammer is already trying to give us some little Easter eggs and ciphers for zombies, which is really cool to see already. But on top of that, we also got a little bit more multiplayer information than most people know about. During the world reveal, they showed off a trailer where they showed some images of the studio, and in the background, we actually got to see some gameplay, and on top of that, possibly even a menu screen of the multiplayer. Now this gameplay we're watching here could be both single player or multiplayer, but the important thing about this gameplay is this is the first time we've actually seen someone controlling a character. The rest of the gameplay we actually saw, it was already pre-decided what that character was going to be doing and then rendered. This is actually someone controlling that character. On top of that we get to see weapons in use, and on top of that a little bit of some levels from the game itself. Now the other thing we're looking at here is what looks to be a multiplayer menu. You can see the different options down the left hand side, and then it seems down the right hand side a whole bunch of different players and this lobby looks so big that it looks more like a ground war lobby because of the amount of writing on that right hand side where the players would normally be displayed in a normal multiplayer menu so we've looked at zombies we've looked at multiplayer now we are going to look at single player now throughout the reveal trailer you may have seen many of the characters wearing a red number one and at the end of the trailer the main character says this welcome to the bloody first you're a long way from texas farm boy so this being said, in association with the red number one, means you're going to be playing as the first infantry division. And believe it or not, this is not the first Call of Duty World War II game where you actually play as the first infantry division. The other game is Call of Duty 2 Big Red One, which was more of like an expansion for Call of Duty 2, but it had a campaign where you played as the first infantry division. And what's going to be interesting to see is how exactly the Big Red One is going to tie in to Call of Duty World War 2. Not to mention... Sledgehammer didn't actually make Call of Duty Big Red one, so it's going to be interesting to see how the two tie together. But guys, that is five things you may or may not have known about the Call of Duty World War II world reveal, and you can feel free to let me know down in the comment section below which one of these things you did know, which ones you didn't know, and anything in between. Also, if you enjoyed the video, it would be very greatly appreciated if you could hit that like button. I always do really appreciate it, and it really does help with the channel. And also, if you're new to the channel and like what you see here, I got plenty more Call of Duty World War II videos planned, so to stay up to date on those, the best way to do so is by hitting that subscribe button but guys i hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and until next time peace out